Good evening, everyone. Uh, once again, Friday evening, 15 minutes with Uncle Russ. But tonight I'm not coming to you live from X Cafe. I'm actually coming from Friend of God India in Elaru. Yes, I'm in India at the moment. What an amazing time. The people have been fantastic. The ministry's been, I don't know, it's just blown me right out of the water. So, but it's really good to see you again. And uh, I'm looking forward to sharing a little story with us. As you know, no music tonight. We have a guitar here, but they have no strings. Yes, they have guitars and they don't have shops that can sell you strings. I don't know how that works. Like having a car without a motor. But that being the point. So tonight's story is, is one that we're all very, very familiar with. And it's called, wait for it. Pinocchio. Yes, so we all know what the thing is about Pinocchio. Eh? So I'm going to give us a little bit of the background about Pinocchio. And as I always do, just to make sure that my research is correct before I start talking about something. So Pinocchio is an Italian fictional character and a protagonist of the children's novel, The Adventures of Pin Pinocchio, written in 1883. I mean, we think all these stories are so modern by Italian writer Carlo Collodi of Florence in Tuscany. Pinocchio was carved by a woodcarver named Geppetto in the Tuscan village. He was created as a wooden puppet, but dreams of, dreams of becoming a real boy. And of course, he's known for his long nose, which grows when he lies. Not like us. Eh? We don't tell lies. No. We these super honest people. Everything we do is so good and so kind and we, we, we don't tell lies to each other. But what I want to do with us tonight, I want to show us some of the alternatives that we use to cover the fact that we're lying. <laughs> so the first one, the first one is the tendency of people to exaggerate. So I've got a lovely little picture over here. All you fishermen out there, you know the big one that got away? Yes, the fish started off as six inches. By the time your story has done the rounds, it was six meters long. And you had to fight it off. And yeah, so what is it when we exaggerate? What does it really mean if we exaggerate? Well, I'm going to tell you what it means. To exaggerate is to stretch the truth. <laughs> so, you see, we're saying, yeah, but there is truth in it. It's just, you know, we, we spice it up. We don't want it to be boring. So, fishermen tend to exaggerate the size of their fish. And children tend to exaggerate the injuries. So, like, if I need a plaster, I'll run to my mom and say, Mom! Look at me, I nearly cut my hand off. And mother would run through and dress the wound and put a bandage on and kiss it better. Yeah. So we all have a tendency to exaggerate. And it's true. I mean, even here, when I tell a story, I'm not just going to tell you some boring story. I try and add a little bit of pizzazz and a bit of action to it, you know, to make it more interesting, makes it more funnier and more dramatic. After all, when you exaggerate, it's not really telling a lie. Uh-oh. That's not true, eh? You see, if we are exaggerating and the truth has been stretched, the reality is we are lying. How many of us have exaggerated things? Whether it's just in the secular life or in ministry, because we don't want like boring things to happen. We want to be super, super special and people must stand in awe of what we do and what we say. I mean, yes. So, when we, when we stretch the truth, we say we're not lying, we're just overstating things a little bit. No, it's a lie. And in Afrikaans, we'd say, Yeilik. <laughs> Yeilik. And now the next thing that a fixed truth is withholding information. Yes, I, I got a little story. It's this guy who went to court and he was accused of stealing. So the magistrate said to him, uh, well, tell the court what happened. He said, Your Honor, 
I can't believe it that these people arrested me just for taking a piece of rope. So he withheld information because he didn't tell the court that on the other side of the piece of rope was a car. He was actually stealing a car, not the piece of rope. You get what I'm saying? So that's what it is, is when we withhold information that we deliberately, so that, like our colleagues, for example, just to show them that we have more power than we don't, we don't want the guy to be on the up and up so that when we do a presentation or something like that, we want to look better than them. Hey. And then when the time comes, the poor bugger can't give the same information that we had because we withheld it. Yes. And then often we give it back to them, but then it's too late. We've already, we've secured the deal. Amen? Okay, so you're with me there. The first thing is exaggeration. The second thing is we tend to withhold information. Now, this is one of my favorites. A white lie. <laughs> so, so, sorry, I, I, I don't mean to laugh at you. I'm actually laughing with you because you know what? It doesn't matter how white the lie is. You know, this is the second part of that statement. It's a lie. So what we do is we say, well, you know, it's a harmless or trivial lie, especially to avoid hurting someone, someone's feelings. Now, I love the fact when I used to be able to watch that um, America's Got Talent. Yes, you know, or England or Britain, whatever country has got talent. And shame, man, then they, the, this kid will go up and start singing, eh? Because the mother told them that they're great singers or that they can act well or they can. The parent lied. <laughs> the parent should have just said to them, Johnny or Mary or whatever, whatever you do, rather find another thing that, that you're good in and strong in. But singing is not one of your strong points. So, on Zlik for Makah. Yeah. Or if somebody asks you, how does this dress look on me? And they look frumpy. And they look oversized. It looks terrible. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, wow. What a good looking dress. Yes. So we lie about it. And then we say, no, 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 no. It wasn't a big lie. It was a little lie just to save them and, and not let them get embarrassed. A lie is the lie. You don't get big lies and small lies and black lies and white lies. It's just a lie. Okay, so then the nose will grow and grow and grow like Pinocchio. And then there's another type of lie that's been going on for eons, especially now during the information age. It sounds so technical. The information age. Yes. Now they have a thing that they call fake news. Yes, fake news is actually the manipulation of truth. And so people think because they see it online and they see it on social media and they see it in newspapers, it's automatically true. They don't bother checking out the, the facts about what, what has actually been mentioned. And before you know it, that person takes that fake news and tells somebody else, and of course, uh, remember the part of the, the exaggeration thing? They add a little bit of spice to that one. Because we've got to add a little bit of spice. Because the story is like a bit weak. And so, what do we do? We change the information creatively. It's like, you know those guys that they would steal from the government through taxes? And the, the bookkeepers and the accountants, are there, they call it creative bookkeeping. But you're lying and you're stealing. <laughs> Not good. Don't be like Pinocchio because then your nose is going to grow. And you know the problem about a little lie or a manipulation or a white lie or an exaggeration that becomes easier and easier and easier to keep lying. And before you know it, it becomes a lifestyle where you're not telling the truth. You know, the world says that the truth will, the, the truth hurts. But Jesus says that the truth shall make you free. I prefer to hear what Jesus says. I don't care what the world says. Amen. And then, of course, we're going to end off with this one. Lying straight. So, uh, a, a dear friend of mine's just done his whole course and on, on this, 
this thing of doing uh, these tests. Yeah, well done to you, Jeff. Well done, my mate. And so you, that's just what's happened is you can be tested and there's certain things that happens to your body when you're tuttling lights and your perspiration and your pulse rate goes up and all that other technical stuff, stuff that I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I don't know all of that stuff. So that's what it is. So what is a lie? It's not telling the truth, period. An example of someone who is lying, who is someone who is dishonest about where he was and what he did. For example, honey, I have to work late tonight. You know, the, the, the overseas contingent is coming and I'm just swamped over, so I'm going to work late tonight. Yes, you're going to work late with the auntie in the office tonight. Be very careful, my friend. Be very, very careful. Yeah, or you're lying about the books. Or you're lying about what you're up to. Or you, 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 know, you, you know what's one of the worst lies? Hey? is being in a relationship and, and making the other person believe that you love them, but you don't. That's a big lie. And it's, it's unacceptable. Amen. So, how do, we, how do we bring this to a close? I'm going to read a few scriptures to us, because that's what I do. Psalm 101 verse 7. He who works deceit shall not dwell within my house. He who tells lies shall not continue in my presence. That's harsh. Oh my gosh, we come out of the presence of God. Colossians 3 9. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. If you proclaim to be born again, if you are saying you are manifested son of God, if you are saying that you're walking closely with Jesus, stop telling lies. Finish. Proverbs 26 verse 28. A lying tongue hates those who are crushed by it, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Acts 5, verse 3, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? I'm telling you, I've had a couple of experiences where people have said, hey, Russ, uh, praise God, you know, he, he's, he's really opened opportunities for us and we've sold some land and we're going to do this. And we, I don't believe anybody. I don't. And I always say to them, please don't make, uh, make statements that you're not going to back up. Okay, don't do that. Proverbs 12 verse 22. Lying lips is an abomination, an abomination to the Lord. But those who deal truthfully are his delight. And then finally, John 8 verse 44. You are of your father the devil. And he, the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. You know, you know we say, hey, who's your daddy? <laughs> is Father God your daddy where you love and obey him and you walk in truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Or are you the, the things in your life manifesting the father of lies? So we get to choose. Thank you so much. Once again, signing out from... Eleru, and uh, have a wonderful evening. we got some ministry happening tonight and tomorrow and Sunday, and then I return back to Thailand next week. But thank you so much for your support. Thank you for your comments, good, bad, and the ugly. I really don't care. Thank you so much. And just one thing to remember, if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. God bless and goodbye.